Throughout the midterms, we had been learning about transportation operating sector, that is world tourism increases, the demand on transportation also increases, and this can have adverse effects like congestion, safety, security, and environment, and seasonality. So now, I'll be discussing the PNR, or known as the Philippine National Railways. PNR is also known as Pambansang Daang Bakal ng Pilipinas. It has two commuter railway services in Bicol and Manila. It used to operate from La Union to Bicol, but now it is under rehabilitation. Unlike other trains in the Philippines, PNR is the only one who has scheduled ride. Next, let's talk about something I always use on going to school, LRT. It is the third train commonly used in the Philippines. There are 13 stations in LRT2, Recto to Antipolo Station, and 20 stations in LRT1, from Baclaran to Roosevelt. And connecting stations are Doroteo C in Station 1 and Recto in Station 2. Another type of train, the metro type system. In Philippines, it is called Metropolitan Rail Transit or MRT. This train runs underground, on the land, and above the land. There are 13 stations in MRT3, starting from North Avenue to Taft Avenue Station. Mabuhay! Cruise lines and tour operators offer unique travel experiences, showcasing destination attractions, also understanding the tourism system involves, recognizing how this different component works together to create a seamless travel experiences for tourists worldwide. Airline. An airline's main goal is to provide air transportation services for passengers and travelers using aircraft. There are three registered airlines from the Philippines. Philippine Airlines is the flag carrier and the largest airline in the country operating domestic and international flights. Cebu Pacific, a low-cost airline based on the Philippines. Air Asia Philippines is a subsidiary of Air Asia here in the country, a low-cost airline based in Malaysia. The advantages of air transportation are it is high speed, minimum cost, and easy transport. Lastly, we also discuss the different trends in the hospitality industry wherein it highlights the adoption of educational technology to facilitate distance learning and provide quality education. It also mentions the popularity of digital payment platforms and online banking for convenience and security. Additionally, it also mentions the digital transformation in the lodging industry, the emergence of vacation packages, and the focus on health and wealth offerings. This topic also briefly touches on e-commerce and online retail. Choose tourism, choose UE Manila!